Good afternoon, Parkway. Thank you so much for joining us on this Wednesday uh, for this time of devotion. Uh, we are so grateful that you're here. We are blessed um, to be present with you and to be able to participate in these devotions together. Um, I'm enjoying uh, hearing my fellow pastors and staff uh, teach through these devotions um, as, as much as you are, maybe even more. Um, today, I wanted to think about, oh, well, before I guess I get that far, let's go ahead and invite you to let us know that you're here, whether you're watching this during the lunchtime hour um, with us live or you are watching it at a later time. Um, please just leave a comment. Uh, let us know that you were here. Uh, say hi, give a hand wave, um, something of that nature. Uh, today, I was just thinking about um, some old wise advice that I have been given on more than one occasion in my life. Um, I have had sponsors and uh, spiritual guides and coaches um, over uh, the years that have all in some way, shape or form related to the problems that I thought I might be going through at the time say to me something along these lines. Um, as long as you continue to focus on the problem, the problem is going to go, uh, going to grow. The, as long as you are planted in that place where um, you can see no solution in sight, there will be no solution that presents itself to you. Uh, my sponsors were usually a little more crass and direct and um, would just tell me flat out, stop living in the problem and start living in the solution. And while this may seem like harsh advice and might seem like it doesn't apply to folks that aren't in recovery or aren't going through really hard times, um, I find that the axiom of truth that runs behind it is something that is applicable to just about everybody I've ever met. Um, we all struggle with things. We all wrestle with things. We all have times when our focus is divided or um, we are distracted and, and go in a different direction. Um, so I thought about this and, and I'm just uh, thinking out loud and sharing with you some of those thoughts. And, and um, regardless of what season of our journey that we may be in as Christ followers, um, we run into things in different stages of life and different times. Sometimes it is the um, what to do with the kids next. Um, and I don't mean in the sense of activity, as I mean in when times of trouble, when there are tough decisions that have to be made or some bad choices that have to be lived through and consequences that have to be experienced. Um, when we are thinking about our employment and the way that we want to go about our vocation and spending our life, um, these are um, sometimes things that can be uh, paramount that cause us to kind of spin out of control on the inside, even though we may look calm and peaceful on the outside. Um, this can be true of health concerns and of just about any, any experience that we may have in our life. So in light of the backdrop of the troubles that each day can bring, of the challenges and opportunities that each day can bring, um, people usually respond in a couple of different ways. Uh, they respond with complete pessimism. Oh, that's just the way it's always been. That's the way it's always going to be. Um, they can kind of be that the glass is half empty all of the time. Um, and that's just my lot in life. And that's just the way it's going to be. Um, there can be some that are at the opposite end of the spectrum and, you know, it's raining outside and we go, oh boy, liquid sunshine, <laughs> yay God. Um, and they always have this glass half full kind of mentality. They are always attempting to um, look for the positive, look for that silver lining. Uh, there are the pragmatists that see a little bit of both sides. Um, but if we're not careful, no matter where we fall on the spectrum, we can get kind of sucked into this whirlpool of um, focusing on the challenge or the problem. And in, in Christian terms, to turn our focus away from the worldly, to turn our focus away from the day-to-day -day and the mundane, would be to turn our focus to God, to get out of the problems of uh, provision or need or lack thereof, to get out of the mindset of scarcity, to get away from the things that can just drive us absolutely bonkers, um, we're called to live into the solution rather than the problem. Um, for me, and I think for um, 
most theologians and pastors and, and Christians, fellow sojourners on the journey, um, that solution is, that focus is Christ, or in terms of the triune God, uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, this is not something that I think is new um, to the faithful world. Um, and so I went Old Testament today just to share with you a way that you might be able to reorient your focus. If life troubles have you down, if parents or children have you down, if something else is weighing on your mind and is causing you to edge God out of God's presence with you, then I would invite you to just turn your focus directly on God. Now, this is a psalm. It is a psalm of praise. It is one that is written by David. You may remember that David is the one that sent Uriah to the front lines to be killed. That way he could make moves and take in Bathsheba as his own. Um, that there was sin involved and that there was reckless behavior and that there were all kinds of things that were involved in a season of David's life that were not holy and God honoring. And, and David certainly had his own problems as, as ruler, um, he had problems with wars and other things. Um, but David teaches us to praise, to turn our focus completely on God. Now, this Psalm of David, Psalm 145, I want you to hear it in the lens that David wrote it. The Psalm is not about David at all. Its entire focus is on God. Hear these words. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will commend your works to another and they will tell of your mighty acts. They will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They will tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All you have made will praise you, O Lord. Your saints will extol you. They will tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might so that all men may know your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through the generations. The Lord is faithful to all his promises and loving toward all he has made. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all will look to you and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving toward all he has made. The Lord is near to all who call on him, but to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. If there are events going on in your life that um, have got you down or have got you rethinking things. Um, I want to invite you to shift your focus from the problems, from the context of the immediate situation and shift your gaze back to God. Um, to remember that it is God's righteousness that will come to fruition. Remember that it is God's goodness and compassion. Remember that it is God's love that it that is chasing after us, that is seeking to envelop us and hem us in. Remember the mighty acts of God. Remember God's power and sustenance. Remember God's redemption. And remember God's glory and majesty. I found that living in that solution has um, changed the way that I interpret the things that are going on around me and the way that I react to them. And I pray that it may also be so with you. Hey, don't forget to tune in. Um, check out our Facebook page and our website. We have some exciting things that are coming up. We are beginning to um, discuss uh, summer programming, um, albeit it'll be late summer. Um, it will still be some programming that we'll have available um, that we're anticipating. Um, Jody's got a fantastic Bible study that is starting on Proverbs uh, next week. 
And so you can sign up and register for that. It's a way to study uh, via Zoom and and to be enriched by God's word. Um, I am sure that it'll be a blessing for all that attend it. Uh, and just stay in touch with us. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Shoot us an email, a text, give us a call, um, and be sure to join us again for worship on Sunday. Thanks so much. Have a great day. God bless.